Thank you for watching my video. My name is Astrid Krasnici. I'm CCNA and CCP certified instructor. Here this video is CCNA semester 3 scaling network chapter 4. We're moving on to section 4.2 wireless LAN operations. Wireless 802.11 frame. All layer 2 frames consist of the header, payload and frame check sequence sections. The 802.11 frame format is similar to Ethernet frame format with the exception that it contains a lot more fields. 802.11 frame format contains the following fields. So we're going to talk in the header that we have a frame control field, which identifies the type of wireless frame and contains subfields for protocol version, frame type, address type, power management, and security settings. Then we have a duration field. Duration is typically used to indicate the remaining duration needed to receive the next frame in the transmission. Then we have address one field. An address one field usually contains the MAC address of the receiving wireless device or an access point. Then we have an address two field. Address two usually contains the MAC address of the transmitting wireless device or an access point. Then address three field, which sometimes contains the MAC address of the destination, such as the router interface, default gateway, to which an access point is attached. Then we have a sequence control field which contains the sequence number and the fragment number subfield. The sequence number indicates the sequence number of the each frame. And address 4 usually is missing because it is used only on ad hoc mode. And then we have the payload which contains the data for transmission and frame check sequence used for layer 2 error control. In the frame control field, in this field we have a protocol version, provides the current version of 802.11 protocol that is being used. Inside that frame control field, we have the protocol version field, which receiving devices use this value to determine in if the version of the protocol of the receiving frame is supported. Then we move on to frame type and frame subtype, which determine the function of the frame. A wireless frame can either be a control frame data frame or management frame. Then to DS or distribution system and from distribution system from DS indicates whether the frame is going to or exiting from the distribution system from internal network and is only used in the data frame or wireless clients associated with an access point. The field can also show if the packet is part of an ad hoc network or part of a wireless distribution system. More fragment field indicates whether more fragments of the frame, either data or management type, are to follow. Then we have a retry field. Indicates whether or not the frame, or the either data or management frame type, is being retransmitted. Then we have a power management field, which indicates whether or sending or device is in active mode or power saving mode. More data field indicate to a device in a power save mode that the access point has more frames to send. It is also used for access point to indicate the additional broadcast or multicast frame are to follow. Then we have a security field which indicates whether encryption and authentication are used in the frame. It can be set for all data frames and management frames which have the subtype set to authentication. The last field is reserved can indicate that all received data from must be processed in order. In the management frame, there's a sub uh, field there as well. So uh, for example, in frame subtype, we can have a associate, association request frame, association response frame, reassociation request response, probe request respond, beacon frame, dissociation frame, authentication, and de-authentication fields. On the frame subtype, we can have frame uh, request to send, RTC, clear to send, or acknowledged. Carrier sends multiple access with collision avoidance. 802.11 WLAN uses the MAC protocol carrier sends multiple access collision avoidance. Wi Fi system or D hop duplex. Shared media configuration, therefore, wireless client can transmit and receive on the same radio channel. So they can send. And receive on the same radio channel and they use a half duplex which is carrier sense multiple access collision avoidance 
This creates a problem because the wireless client cannot hear while it is sending, thus making it impossible to detect the collision. To address this problem, IEEE developed an additional collision avoidance mechanism called the Distribution Coordination Function, or for short, DCF. Using DCF, a wireless client transmits only if channel is clear. All transmissions are acknowledged. Therefore, if a wireless client does not receive an acknowledgement, it, assume, it assumes a collision occurred and retries after random waiting interval. For wireless devices to communicate over network, they must first associate, associate with an access point or wireless router. An important part of A2211 process is discovering a WLAN and subsequently connecting to it. Management frames, frames are used by wireless devices to complete the following three stages process. First, we discover new wireless access points. You know, it's like when you open your mobile phone or something and you scan for new access uh, for new uh, networks. There, what you're doing is discovering a new wireless access point. Then, once you click one of them, it gives you a challenge. What's the password? You are what you're doing. Once you enter the password, you're authenticating with that access point. And then if the authentication is successful, you associate. The access point is going to send you an IP address and other information. So to associate with each other, a wireless client and access point must agree on specific parameters. Common configurable wireless parameters include First, network mode. Refers to the 802.11 WLAN standards. Access point and wireless router can operate in a mixed mode, which means that they can simultaneously use multiple standards. SSID, a security set identifier, is a unique identifier the wireless client uses to distinguish between multiple wireless networks in the same vicinity. If SSID broadcast is enabled, which can be disabled, it can be hidden, the SSID name appears in a list of available wireless networks on the client. So names are usually 2 up to 32 characters long. And then we have a channel settings. Refers to the frequency band being used to transmit wireless data. Wireless router and access point can choose a channel setting or it can be set manually if there is an interference with another access point or wireless devices. We talk later, there are so many channels. And then if we see that we have quite a lot of interference with other uh, devices, we can change the channel, see if that will help. And then security mode, which refers to the security parameters settings such as WEP, WPA, or WPA2, which we can talk a bit more in detail later on. Always enable the highest security level supported. For home or small office, you should use WPA2 personal. And then encryption. WPA2 requires that you choose an encryption. Use the AES, whatever possible, advanced encryption system, password, as required from the wireless client to authenticate to an access point. A password is something called a security key. Discovering access point. Wireless devices must discover and connect to an access point or wireless router. Wireless client connect to an access point using scanning probing process. This process can be a passive mode. The access point openly advertises its services by periodically sending broadcast beacon frames containing the SSID supported standards and security settings. So, for example, as you walk in, your uh, access point will uh, automatically advertise to your device what are what is the SSID, what standard they support, and what security settings they're using. Or, the primary purpose of the beacon is to allow wireless client to learn which networks and access points are available in a given area, thereby allowing them to choose which network and access point to use. Or active mode, when you use scanning, wireless client must know the name of SSID the wireless client initiates the process by broadcasting a probe requesting frames on multiple channels. So this is when you scan. When you set to your mobile phone, you say, okay, what's your wireless devices or Wi-Fi is around here? Your wireless mobile or smartphone will send a uh, probe and saying to the uh, access point, okay, everybody send me the what's, what's your SSID, what, are, what standards you support, what's your security settings. Authentication, 802.11 standard was originally developed with two authentication mechanisms. Open authentication, fundamentally a null authentication where the wireless client says authenticate me, an access point or send, okay, yep. 
Open authentication provides wireless connectivity to any wireless device and should only be used in situations where security is not a concern. For example, now you'd never want to use open authentication because anybody within the vicinity with a network, wireless network card will be able to authenticate and come in your network. Now, it's good if you're troubleshooting or if you install a new wireless, if you if you uh, install a new wireless network, then fine. Open authentication while everything you can, everybody can connect, and then once you are sure everything is working correctly, you move on to something called a shared key authentication. The technique is based on the key that is pre-shared between the client access point. Most shared key authentication installation the exchange is as follows. Um, for example, you. They will, the access point will send you the challenge and you have to respond with the correct key. Another type of authentication that is not here, it's called uh, enterprise authentication, where you implement uh, a server, like a radio server for authentication. So you're doing the, the access point is not going to authenticate you. So the wireless client, so how we authenticate with a shared key is the wireless client sends an authentication frame to an access point. The access point responds with the challenge text to the client. The client grips the message using its shared key and returns the encrypted text back, back to the access point. The access point that decrypts the encrypted text using the shared key. If the decrypted text matches the challenging text, the access point authenticates the client. If the message does not match, the wireless client is not authenticated and the wireless access is denied. After the wireless client has been authenticated, the access point process uh, to the association stage. The association stage finalizes the setting and establishes the data link between the wireless client and the access point. A tri triple E 802.b GN all operate in the microwave frequencies of the radio spectrum. The IEEE 802.b GN standards operate in 2.4 GHz up to 2.5 GHz spectrum while 802.11a and AC standard operate the more heavily regulated 5 GHz band. The 2.4 GHz band is subdivided in multiple channels. Now the overall combined channel between is 22 MHz with each channel separated by 5 MHz. So each channel is separated by 5 MHz and one channel is 22 MHz. 802.11b standard identify 11 channels for North America. In Europe, we have 13 channels. Channel 1, 6 and 11 are non-overlapping channels or non-overlapping B channels. You can see the 1 there is not overlapping with, with 6. It's overlapping with uh, uh, 2, 3 and 4 and 5, but not with 6. So the least overlapping channels that you have is channel 1, channel 6, and channel 11, which we use most of the time. For example, if you choose to use channel 9 for some reason, because you're not ordinary, you want to be special, then what you're doing, you, you, are hit, you are hurting yourself with all the people that are using channel 6 and channel 11, because channel uh, 10 or 9 or whatever you're using is between those two channels. So it's going to have interference from channel 6 and channel 11. So best way to stay on top of those three channels, six, 1, 6 and 11. Thank you very much for watching. We have covered a section 4.2. Now we move on to section 4.3, wireless LAN security. Thank you very much and see you in that video.